Imagine this, you're a small business owner and you have a question about whether or not those shady bookkeeping practices are going to be a problem. You don't really feel like checking a professional though because retainers are expensive. So you do the next best thing, which is that you go on to AI and ask if you're a criminal there instead. It's a win-win, right? You get advice on how to be a better tax evader and you don't need to pay a lawyer who's just going to tell you to rethink all your life choices. Absolutely nothing can go wrong with that plan. Except for not knowing that the AI platform that you're using will make that question that you're asking about how to be a better criminal visible like by everybody that uses that site. And you didn't opt out before you made this very public confession and that just went viral. This isn't a hypothetical, unfortunately, because Meta AI's Discover tab has been getting some pretty negative attention lately for exactly this problem. Now, it appears that a lot of people may not have known that what they were asking Meta AI was available for everybody to see on the Discover tab. And this resulted in some questions that were publicly readable that probably weren't meant to be. While it might be really entertaining to read some wannabe passport bros questions about how to score a young Asian woman, it probably wasn't so great for that guy who was asking if someone he knew actually committed a crime. Both of these are actual examples, by the way. And I'm not going to include them here because honestly, these are pretty embarrassing for these users. But if you really want to find them, you can probably find them online if you want. Meta did recently add a warning to its users that the searches might be public, but it is still going to default to making these prompts available on the Discover tab. More recently, though, Redditors discovered that a simple Google search would bring up chats from ChatGPT that had a share feature activated, which ended up leading to OpenAI eliminating this feature entirely. In fact, there's a lot of privacy issues when using AI. There's this embarrassing data leak that was by an app mainly used by teenagers to flirt with their crushes. A lawsuit currently going on in the EU claims that Bumble accesses dating profiles to help you craft the perfect date pickup line using AI. There's also this troublesome leak of job seeker info from a company that by its own admission, one in eight Americans have worked for at some point, including our current president. But there's also even this company that banned its employees from using chat GPT at work at all after proprietary and confidential code ended up being leaked. Unlike the hallucination issue that I talked about in an earlier video, there are piles of examples of client data breaches by lawyers, but that's more likely because nobody's caught it yet, not as much that it hasn't happened. There are still tons of situations though where people are finding out the hard way that chats aren't exactly private when they're talking to AI. These are lessons that all lawyers should take to heart. Understanding the privacy risk that's related to using AI is essential to understanding your duties when it comes to client data confidentiality. I'm going to start by pointing out that the tools that are specifically developed for legal use have already addressed the risks that I'm about to discuss in this video. So what we're not going to be talking about are research platforms such as Lexis or Westlaw, nor are we talking about client management systems such as Clio or document review software such as Relativity. But if you're using tools such as ChatGPT or Copilot, hopefully not Grok, this will apply to you. Now, there are a few contributing factors here that all are going to contribute to the same privacy issues. One problem is that the data that you enter into a chat is likely going to be used then to train that AI platform. So to give you an example, let's say you entered info into ChatGPT about your influencer client to help write a contract for them. But then that data that you just entered could come up later when a third party asks about that person. Also problematic though, is that there's real humans that work for these AI platforms that do have access to the information that's entered into the chats. OpenAI, for example, is clearly stated multiple times now that human reviewers are gonna have access to prompts unless you opt out. This is to ensure accuracy through a human review. But it's the storage of all this data that proves to be another major problem. Now there's been incidents at OpenAI, Google, and Microsoft that all involve data leaks of prompts that were entered into their AI platforms. That doesn't include incidents such as the one I mentioned at the beginning of this video though. 
In that instance, the AI system that handled job applications for everyone applying for jobs at McDonald's was compromised. In that case, though, it was because the default password for the software wasn't changed, which allowed hackers to access the information of millions of job applicants. Now, considering that third parties often store prompt data, this type of scenario, hacks involving compromised passwords, is surely going to happen again. And that's because half of all data breaches are due to password compromise like this. But in the corporate world, 80% of breaches could be due to weak, reused, or stolen passwords. So even though AI platforms themselves may not leak your data, what you enter into their chatbots really is only as safe as the worst password that protects that data. So how would you even avoid this should be your next question. And the best advice that I'm going to have for you is to never put client data into a publicly accessible chatbot such as ChatGPT. So if you must do this, redact that information or fake the data that can be used to actually identify your client. You can also try using in private mode. But you need to make sure that this would actually take care of the issue with the model that you're using. With some AI platforms, turning on private mode may not actually mean that your data is secure. Unfortunately, this would mean that you have to familiarize yourself with the terms of service of the AI you use, especially when it relates to how that AI can use or store your data. And God knows reading extra legal documents doesn't sound fun. Ultimately, though, you have an ethical duty to know the tools that you're using. The ABA has made it abundantly clear that if you're, you're going to use AI in your practice, you have to be competent at it. Plus, your duty to supervise does extend to the tools you use, and this includes AI. You can check out this other video about AI issues and ethics to get more information about that. And I'm going to link the ABA opinion in my source list. When it comes to protecting client data, your ethical duty should be obvious to you there as well. It really should have already been covered for you in a professional responsibility class, and I really should not have to rehash client confidentiality issues for you here. But here's a hard truth. AI has gotten so ingrained in every tool that you use as a lawyer that it's not optional any longer to learn at least the basics of it. This is why I'm currently producing a course to teach lawyers how to use AI in a practical way and teach them in a way that they'll understand. If you subscribe to this channel and sign up for the email list, you're going to know when that course drops. So far, it's looking like mid-October 2025. For signing up for the email list, you're going to get a free guide on how to use AI in your practice and not end up getting disbarred. Drop a comment below. Are you AI curious? Are you flirting with a chatbot or are you going to ghost it like that bad bumble date? If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. It helps other lawyers like you see it. And share this video if you know someone who might confess to malpractice on Meta AI's discovery page. Hit that notification bell to know when I launch more lessons to help you use AI with confidence without risking your law license.